We can probably go ahead and get started. Got a full room. This is exciting. Uh, my name is Lance. I'm an engineer at Huawei. And I'm Colleen. I'm an engineer at SUSE. And today we're going to go through the Stein project update for Keystone. So real quick, we'll just kind of go through an introduction into what OpenStack identity is. We'll talk about the things that we accomplished in Rocky. We'll discuss what we're working on today for Stein, and then we'll get ahead to the T-release. We'll also spend some time talking about cross-project initiatives. We'll tell you how you can get involved, and then share some other related talks and sessions that you can find us at. So OpenStack Identity is an API reference, and Keystone is an implementation of that API reference. It essentially came out of the need to reduce duplicate code across OpenStack services back in 2012 and it fills a pretty important role in OpenStack. It's meant to supply end users and services with information about identities and the authorization those identities have. Keystone can also sit in between OpenStack and other places that your users might come from, like LDAP or external identity providers. This is some uh, of our most recent user survey results taken earlier this year, and we like to include this in our project update because it really does a good job of showcasing why we spend so much time in certain areas of the code, but you can expect to see these themes pop up through our presentation. So Rocky was a really busy release for us. First and foremost, we introduced a couple of additional default roles. So instead of just having an admin role, you now have member and reader by default. Uh, we'll touch on what that means for our Stein work a little bit later. Um, we also made several improvements to our Unified Limits API. These are mainly to make it more consistent with the rest of Keystone's API and to make it easier to consume. We also implemented a uh, hierarchical enforcement model. So this model actually has opinions about how limits for resources should work across a tree of projects or a hierarchy of projects. Uh, and this is supplemental to the flat enforcement model that we originally introduced in Queens when we implemented the uh, unified limits work. We also ended up embarking on a really large refactor to remove uh, Keystone's dependency on Python paste and paste deploy. This was ultimately because we were removing a bunch of code that was V2 specific for um, Queens, and this gave us a good opportunity to remove some homegrown API dispatching code in Keystone. Uh, so we've transitioned that to working with Flask instead. And this is pretty transparent to end users, but it does a couple of really important things. It simplifies our code base, especially our API layer, um, it makes it easier for people to understand, and it also makes it easier for us to implement some new features specific to Federation and uh, rolling out more granular policies. We also helped bootstrap a new Oslo library called Oslo Limit, and this is helpful for services that need to consume unified limit information out of Keystone and run that through enforcement checks. I'll touch a little bit more on this when we get to the cross-project section. We also proposed and merged several patches to clients that get them up to speed with some of our newer features like system scope, system role assignments, and unified limits. So you can start consuming those features using Python OpenStack client, Python Keystone client, and OpenStack SDK. So I'll talk a little bit about what we are planning on doing for this cycle and what we've already uh, accomplished this cycle. Um, so the first thing is we're going to be building on all the work we did for Unified Limits last cycle um, by adding domain support for uh, Unified Limits, which means that two-level uh, limit hierarchy that we have now, um, currently that only supports two levels of projects. We'd like it to be so that the top level could be a domain, since that's a pretty common way of organizing your resources. Uh, so we'll be working on that this cycle. Um, the next step for application credentials, which is a feature we introduced in Queens, is to implement um, fine-grained access control, and we're going to be doing that by adding API capability lists as a property of an application credential so that a user, when they're creating their application credential, can uh, really restrict the application credential to being able to only uh, call certain APIs which gives the user a lot more control over how this credential is used, um, even more so than what Keystone roles will allow, since those Keystone roles are not very flexible right now. Um, in, uh, based on the feedback from the user survey and 
in working with various edge computing groups, we're gonna be stepping up the priority of improving our federation implementation. Um, so stomping on bugs, fixing some usability issues, getting real CI in place, and improving our documentation so that we can actually give a really good uh, big picture overview of what you can accomplish with Keystone's federation. We are just about, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we've just about finished uh, merging the rest of the uh, Flask transition work. Um, so we're just gonna be focusing on making sure that, that uh, any bugs that crept in during that refactor are stomped out and making sure that that re remains completely transparent to the end user. As always, we're gonna be working on trying to fix policy um, by uh, working with the rest of the projects to implement um, default policies that will allow for a real read-only role um, out of the box across the board, um, making that a lot easier for operators to configure. We're also gonna be working on um, making the naming conventions for policy rules more consistent, so that's less of a headache for operators to configure as well. We'll also be working with the rest of the community to uh, get projects to be able to consume the new system scope um, so that we can really start moving away from the adminness problem that we've been having for such a long time with pure project scope. Uh, we recently just merged um, support for multi-factor auth receipts. This is a new way of, um, this is going to improve the uh, client experience for multi-factor authentication because it gives clients something to follow up on so that they can actually do sequential authentication steps, which is going to drastically improve the end user experience for doing two-factor auth, multi-factor auth. And finally, we're gonna implement JWT or JSON web, web tokens as a new token provider alongside the existing for net token provider. And we're doing that because uh, JWT is a more globally known uh, token standard. Um, services outside of OpenStack are gonna be more able to understand and consume it. And it could help us down the line with improving uh, multi-region and distributed keystone setups um, because, of, because it has uh, the ability to do uh, asymmetric validation, which is helpful. So looking ahead to the next release and beyond that, um, something that we've been talking about for a little while is turning, uh, what it would take to turn Keystone into an identity provider proxy and making it actually usable and useful outside of an OpenStack context. And so that will lean on a lot of work to um, improve and expand our federation implementation and uh, get Keystone to natively understand uh, federation protocols like SAML and OpenID Connect. Uh, we're gonna be continuing to build our uh, limit hierarchical models. Um, this will lean on um, uh, getting the other projects to uh, consume um, the Keystone limits um, and getting a really good understanding of how this um, consuming and enforcing is going to work in the other projects and getting a good proof of concept in our Oslo library for consuming hierarchical limits. We're gonna to continue to work with uh, operators and edge computing groups on um, improving our multi-site support um, and figuring out where the gaps are for those types of use cases and building out some reference architectures for that. We're gonna be striving to apply for the uh, rolling upgrade governance tag by finally uh, reviving our rolling upgrades testing um, and getting those tests to be actually voting so that we are confident in our rolling upgrade support. And as always, we're gonna be improving policy, working on cleaning it up, making it easier for operators to use, easier for uh, end users to consume and understand. So I wanted to touch a little bit on some of the cross-project initiatives, if you can't already tell. Um, we've got several of them in place. One of the more recent ones, as Colleen mentioned, is coming up with a consistent policy naming convention. And this is because no matter what OpenStack service you look at, everyone's kind of got a different way to name their policies. So a few weeks ago, we kind of stepped back, looked at all of the different policy names and types that we have out there and came up with a convention that should work for everybody. 
So we documented that formally, and now we have something to work towards. So this is going to help, uh, especially with operators, to at least understand what they're dealing with when they're overriding a policy. And then also the deployments that might be shuffling their policy enforcement checks off to an external system. It'll give a more consistent look and feel to end users that might be accessing those policy names. We're also continuing to push the adoption of unified limits. Right now we're working closely with Nova specifically to get a few of their resources into Keystone by the end of Stein. Uh, we're taking a similar approach to uh, education around scope types with Keystone. So system scope, domain scope, and project scope, and how those scopes can uh, help services better protect their APIs and allow more granularity. So what this is ultimately doing is giving developers the tools to expose more of what they do to end users in a safe and secure way. Going hand in hand with that is that better default role support. Because we have those roles in Rocky, we can start transitioning our default policies to consuming those. Uh, so now you're getting that read-only role out of the box. You're getting a member role and an admin role that all kind of do what you would expect across the different scope types. This will make it easier so you don't have to go and override a bunch of policies just to get a read-only role in your deployment. So if, you, if you'd like to start getting involved and start um, being part of the discussion, a couple ways you can do that are uh, we have office hours on Tuesdays um, after our meeting. Our meeting's at 4 p.m. UTC, and our office hours take place after that. So that's a good chance to find a lot of us there, uh, get in touch with us, start some discussions, or to help us stomp out bugs, um, work on some features, that kind of thing. We also do, uh, every Friday, or most Fridays, um, we do uh, a report to the mailing list, and we have an etherpad where we can uh, collaboratively compile um, a summary of what we talked about, what we did that week. Um, so if there's anything that you feel is, is noteworthy and worth, worth mentioning to the rest of the mailing list, um, you can visit that, that etherpad and add some notes to there. So some other places where you can find Keystone-related talks and sessions. Uh, this is a list of relevant forum sessions that we have for Keystone. The one that I kind of want to note is we have project onboarding right after this. So if there's anything that interests you or you want to learn more about it or uh, want to get involved in a particular initiative, that's a great time to do it. Uh, and here is a list of related talks uh, specific to Keystone. Uh, there's one going on right now uh, along with this session, which is the OpenStack Policy 101. But that'll be recorded if you want to go catch up on that later. Um, that about does it for our project update. But it does look like we have some time for questions. Uh, so if you do have any questions, we can answer them now. Uh, that's a good question. That hasn't been on our radar, but I can make a note to follow up with that team directly, though. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Comments, questions, concerns? Cool. Well, thank you so much for attending. We appreciate it.